Okay, here we are at the very front end of the International Space Station. Uh, this is uh, the uh, forward end of Node 2, and uh, this is uh, right behind this hatch is uh, the PMA, the pressurized mating adapter uh, to which the space shuttle docks uh, whenever the next space shuttle comes. We're about one month away from uh, the, the 15A mission, STS-119, with Lee Archambault and uh, Tony Antonelli and the rest of uh, their great crew. You can see we have our flags up here at the most forward part. It's a 15-nation partnership, this International Space Station. So uh, we'll start with uh, the Node 2. We will uh, stop at the Kibo module here, the Japanese pressurized module and the Japanese logistics platform. We'll stop back there in a second. We'll take a look in the Columbus module, pride of uh, the European Space Agency, and our pride too. And then you can look down the stack, and you can see uh, several other modules, and uh, and even into the a little bit into the functional cargo block, the FGB, and then the service module. So it's a it's a really big space station that we got. So uh, let's start off right here with uh, our new modules. This is Node Two, Harmony. And it uh, was recently brought up. It's been up here for maybe about one year. And uh, we can see from Harmony, we can go into the Columbus module. PMA to where the shuttle is. And the gem. So uh, we have stowage in the overhead above. And a interim resistive exercise device until we get the advanced resistive exercise device up and running we get to use i red until a red is good and then there's a hatch below little window that you can see out see our beautiful planet and uh that's uh that's node two as we fly into the japanese experimental module the gem also known as the kibo we can see it's the biggest module aboard the space station and it's uh, in fact it even says so here there's a sorry for moving the camera so fast but it says right here welcome to Kibo please enjoy and relax in this brand new the most spacious and quietest room in the ISS along the floor we're holding uh, we're temporarily stowing some panels including the cabin which is going to be useful for the toilet You can see here, uh, this is the Cybo rack, which is uh, for cell biology. And then we have a fluid rack, Urutai. So these are the two main Japanese science racks that are up here now. There's more that are coming. Behind these panels here is nothing. It's the actual shell of the spacecraft. And you can see uh, there's wires and a few wires back there. And if we're lucky, we'll see a shell heater, these orange strips. And they keep the, sh the actual uh, body of the space station from freezing or getting really cold uh, by running electrical current and keeping everything warm with the heaters. Okay, we'll stop right here real quick and take a look on the floor, on the deck they call it. This is the minus 80 lab freezer, Melfi, and uh, we use that a lot. We store a lot of our biological samples, urine and blood there. And on the ceiling, uh, we have the ICS and PROX uh, rack, uh, rack. So PROX stands for Proximity Operations. It's going to be used for the H2, uh, excuse me, HTV, which is the H2 um, transfer vehicle and uh, also ICU ICS is a, a comm system uh, that uh, Japan is going to have up and running once the external platform is out there so this uh, rack uh, shares uh, double duty okay and uh, we have the airlock here which we haven't used yet, but it's uh, ready to go. So once the exposed facility is there, the airlock will be great because then you can uh, take something, uh, put something in the airlock, 
and then outside is a robot arm that can take it and put it on the outside back porch. Now Sandy and I just reconfigured this uh, robotics workstation. It looks a little bit cable-y today, but it's not so bad. Uh, we're actually going to run uh, a test on Monday using up all the using the the backup uh, robotics control uh, blocks. So we actually had to uh, re redo a lot of cables today, and it went by pretty well. So here are the backup boxes that we worked on, and. Uh, Let's take a quick look out the window before it gets dark outside. We're going around uh, not every, the world every 90 minutes, so uh, it gets uh, we get to see a lot of sunrises and sunsets. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful out there. So this is looking out the port side of the space station, and we're actually also on the front side, so front port side of the space station. And let's take a look what we can see out there. We can see the robot arm I was talking about, the GEM RMS. Those orange things are the solar arrays on the on the port side. And you can see we have a full set. And uh, 15A STS-119 is going to be bringing up these, uh, the last uh, solar array on the starboard side. And take a look. There's our blue, be beautiful blue planet there. And uh, looking at this and where we are, I'd say we're over the uh, uh, South Indian Ocean. You can actually see some icebergs down there. So we're actually probably between um, Africa and Antarctica. You can actually see the different uh, shades of the blue water. So that's the view we get to see every day up here. It's pretty nice. All right, closing the window shutter. The Japanese guys always think it's fun when we talk about closing the window. It's like, no, no, closing the shutter because the window should never be open. Okay. Now we're going to float up. One of the few modules that actually goes up, and that's the uh, Japanese or the GEM logistics platform, the JLP. It's very empty in here, very few handrails to grab on with your toes or your hands. And uh, we have a few zero-g stowage racks right in here. We also have a few of these, uh, what they're called soft dummy panels, which there's nothing behind. And it's a pretty, uh, pretty nice closet up here in space. Then if you look down, you can see the deck, the airlock there on the port side. And we'll just float on right down. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so now fly with me. We're gonna go to the uh, we're gonna go to the Columbus module.